Hi, it's uh, Wednesday the 12th of April today and we're going to be taking a look at pollen collection and pollen frames. If you like this series of videos uh, on our queen rearing, uh, be sure to click subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. If you're over on Facebook, click on the, the link above that will take you over to YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way, every time that we do upload a new video, you'll get an email notification saying that there's one there. So why do we bother collecting pollen? There's various reasons why we collect pollen is for queen rearing, later on in the year, we can extend our season slightly, raising uh, more queens because what we can do is we can make up pollen frames if there is a lack of pollen coming in through the front door. You, you may want to sell pollen. Uh, there's a lot of people that uh, enjoy putting pollen on cereals, uh, different health remedies they might use it for. You can also save it and freeze it to use in the springtime. So you can make up your own pollen patches without actually using a pollen substitute because even though a lot of these pollen substitutes are good, you can't actually beat the real thing. Real pollen is much, much better than pollen substitutes. It's better than the near pollen gold patties that you can get, the ones from Man Lake. Um, even the ones that come from uh, Neopol uh, that do contain real pollen, the patties that you make using the freshest pollen that you possibly can, uh, which will be the ones from last season, are going to be a lot better for your bees. Also, you can make up pollen patties uh, because as I showed you in a video earlier this week or last week, we, we put a pollen patty on top of the hive. So if you can make this pollen patty up with the, your own pollen instead of a pollen substitute, even better. So there's a number of different ways you can collect pollen. This is what they call, this one's from Man Lake. It's for a Langstroth hive. Uh, we're using this as an example. This is what they call their superior pollen collector. Uh, what happens is it, you put you replace the floor or you, you put this on top of the floor and you block up the entrance uh, to the original hive. I normally just take the floor away and, and put the brood box directly on top of this. So what happens is the bees go in through this small slot down here. As they're going through this slot there, they're going to go across the mesh floor and this is going to literally knock the pollen off from their pollen baskets into a collection tray. The collection trays round this side and it's a drawer. It's got a mesh on it so if you do leave it there for a while, it's not going to go moist, the air is going to get to it and it's going to start drying it out and that's what you want. On these particular ones, you can put this drawer on either side, there's a blanking plate on this side that you can put on the other side and vice versa. So when the bees come back out, they're going to come back out through these tubes. Now the reason for these tubes is because you don't want the bees going in straight through these holes otherwise you're going to miss that grill completely and you're not going to get the pollen collected so these tubes it's going to put off the bees going back in through this way and they're going to start using this slot it doesn't take them long to, to actually find uh, this new entrance that you put in it because it's only going to be slightly higher five or six inches higher than it originally was you only want to put these on for a day or two days at the most and then you want to take them away because you don't want to starve the hive of protein that they're taking in for the old bees because this will collect 99% of all the pollen that goes in th through the entrance. So as I say, you don't want to leave it on long. You don't want to put it on too early in the year either if you're collecting pollen for queen ivy because if you put it on too early in the year, you going to interrupt the, their cycle for actually building up the colony so you want to keep it i i normally put these on about mid-june time the best time to actually put a pollen trap on 
is late afternoon and then they've got all morning to collect pollen for themselves when the, the main amount of pollen is coming in and then that way you're going to get the, the later sort of afternoon early evening pollen collections that you're going to get and then after two days three days three days is the maximum that you should ever leave a pollen trap on the hive put it you can put it on another one or put it away for a few weeks let them get back to doing what bees do best and then pop it on again you can buy these for national hives i've not seen many of this particular type for national hive but I'm, I'm sure that they're out there somewhere this one is sold by man lake um, or the defunct man lake which is now beequipment.co.uk so you can buy those from from them Arbella, and I'll put a picture up in the corner, they sell one for National and it's a lot simpler. Literally, it hooks on the front of the hive and the bees, as they go in through the slots, it knocks the pollen off, it falls down into a drawer and you pull the drawer out and empty it. And that one, you can just literally hook on and hook off. I don't have any of those uh, at the moment to show you. We're picking some up in a couple of weeks uh, when we're down that way because come the end of this month we're going to be going back down to Yorkshire and I might even take the cameras with me and we're going to be some of the, the early nooks that we've taken down to Yorkshire to get on the RC drip to, to build up stronger. We're going to bring those back up here but it's getting the bee inspector to inspect them down there before we actually do transport them back to Scotland because we don't want to be transporting any nasties from down there back up here. It's well well worth having a, a pollen trap because as I say you've got it for your queens, you've got it for early spring build up so you can make a pollen frame or pollen patties and you've got it if you just want to collect pollen for as a health food as a supplement or uh, one of the myriad of ways there is of, of using pollen out there. Um, I had a look through my freezer and that's that pitiful amount is all I could find because we've used everything else doing our early spring build up uh, the pollen frames that we've, we've already made up here rather than using pollen substitute. I've not got a clue what this is of it's a ooh, it's a grey brownie uh, there's a few that looks like there's a bit of poppy in there and uh, maybe some late gorse that's in there but what i'll do now is i'll very quickly show you how to make up a pollen frame and what you do but when you are making up the pollen frame i'd say you use about half a kilo to a kilo per frame of pollen that's what you're going to need when you're making up pollen frames you, you don't want to put a small amount in it's it's a waste of your effort and to be honest it's a waste of taking a frame back out for the bees i'll quickly show you how these um are made up and, and what you'll find so we'll remove the top brood box so as the bees come in they're gonna go underneath this board here they're gonna go across the plate they're gonna emerge back up here so that they can go up into the brood box when they go back out, they'll, they'll literally come down the front and they'll exit through the, these small holes which are there, through the tubes and away. It normally takes them a couple of hours to, to work out how to get back in, get back out, but it, it's fairly rapid. And then all you've got to do when you're taking it away is you take your drawer out, empty this into jars, if you use a dehumidifier or you're going to use honey warmer or you're going to use the incubator and you can dry pollen out and store it that way once it's dry if you don't dry it out it will go moldy if you don't want to dry it out and you can't dry it out pop it in jars uh, or the big kiln of jars pop it in the freezer and it'll last for, forever in there you are going to get a slight drop whether you dry it or whether you freeze it you're going to get a slight drop in the actual protein uh, levels that are in there but it's not going to be significant enough to affect the bees uh, to be quite honest because whatever you're going to give them back 
it's better than getting nothing basically uh, so if, if the levels did drop let's say they dropped to 95 percent protein levels that they were getting back out of their that pollen uh, as a total it'd be better than zero percent what they would be getting or it's a it's a it's a top up to what they're, they're collecting naturally so what you need to make a pollen frame is is a is a drawn frame and all you literally have to do then is with a large a much larger quantity of pollen than we've got here literally all you gotta do you tip it on so you would i typically end up with a with a a pile about so large and then literally just rub it into the frame so that you cover the whole frame area do that on both sides give it a nice rubbing it's not going to fall out if you're one of the thousands of people that follow us over on facebook thank you so very much for following us on facebook Big favour to ask you now, if you could nip over to YouTube and subscribe to our channel over on YouTube and get that up into the many thousands, that would be a massive, a massive thank you again for doing that for us. The more subscribers we get over on YouTube to the videos, the more videos we're going to make this summer. That's a lie, I'm going to make loads of videos anyway, but, but it would be a massive help if you could nip over uh, to YouTube and click on that subscribe button.